In this video, we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations, specifically uh, solving them by factoring. So the two things you need to be familiar with before you take on this lesson is the zero product property and then how to factor quadratic. So both those uh, parts I'm going to go through a little bit quicker to make the video a little bit shorter. All right, but if you need help with those things, just make sure you let me know. All right, so solving quadratics, remember a quadratic expression is this time when we have this x squared. All right, so a quadratic equation is just going to have an equal sign involved. All right, so here's the general strategy for solving a quadratic equation by factoring. All right, our goal is eventually to use the zero product property. So the first thing we're going to do is get zero on one side, which means everything else on the equation needs to be on the other side. So we're going to move everything to one side of the equation and have zero on the other side. After that, we'll have this quadratic expression that we should be able to factor. When we factor, we unfoil it into these two terms, which again are equal to zero. And now we can use a zero product property, just take each one of these individual things and set them equal to zero. And then we can just solve linear equations instead of solving a quadratic equation. All right, so here's our first example, x squared minus 3x minus 18. The first step's actually already done for us because our first step in solving a quadratic is to get zero on one side. So that's done for us. So now the next step is to factor the quadratic we have. So we want to factor x squared minus 3x minus 18. All right, so the way we do this, we want to find two numbers that add to give negative 3 and multiply to give negative 18. Again, because you've uh, factored before, I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker. The perfect pair in this case is going to be negative 6 and positive 3. All right, so my quadratic is going to turn into this expression. I'm going to factor out an x from the first pair and a positive 3 from the second pair and unfoil that to get x minus 6 times x plus 3. Right, so I like to do that on the side. That way I don't kind of confuse what's going on with my actual equation I'm trying to solve. But now I know this left-hand side is x minus 6 times x plus 3. That's equal to 0. So that was step 2. There's a lot of steps involved in step 2 of that process that we're talking about. But you can just say it as one step. Factor the quadratic. And now we can use the uh, zero product property. Take our two factors, x minus 6 and x plus 3, and set those equal to 0. And in these cases, solving these linear equations are both one step, add 6, subtract 3. All right, so these are our two solutions. And right, you can see if you were to plug in either of these numbers, you would get 0. So the process that we were talking about is going to work for all these quadratics that we're focusing on right now. All right, the only difference compared to the last example is the last example started with 0. So it's always important to remember to get 0 on one side first. So the first thing I'm going to do in this equation is subtract 5x from both sides. Or not. 5x there. And I'm also going to subtract 3 from both sides. Uh, you can do this in two steps if you want, but generally you can just think about it as one step of moving everything over. So the 2x squared is going to stay. I'm subtracting 5x, subtracting 3 because on the right-hand side, everything cancels and I get zero. Again, that's the important thing, that I get zero over there. I have another thing, just kind of a hint. I always like to keep my x squared term positive because that's the way we generally see quadratic. So you could have also moved this over here and got zero, but I like to keep that two positive. That's why I move things to the left. So you'll generally see me do that. There's nothing wrong with doing it the other way. I just like seeing my quadratic starting with a positive number. Now I'm going to go to the side. I want to factor my quadratic. All right, so my perfect pair that adds to negative 5 and multiplies to negative 6 is negative 6 and positive 1. Oops. Minus 6x plus x minus 3. My first grouping, I can factor out a 2x. My second grouping, I can factor out a 1. All right, so now I know the factored version of this quadratic. I know I'm going through it quickly on the right-hand side, but again, you can slow down the video or practice a little bit more with your factoring and ask questions if you need help with that. All right, so I get zero on one side, break down my quadratic into its factors, and now I use the zero product property. 
I have my first uh, linear I created, it says add three to both sides. My second linear, I subtract one first, then divide by two. I know it gives me my two answers to this quadratic. All right, another example, and the first thing I recognize is I see this equation, and I see these x squareds, so I know it's a quadratic. So I want to get everything to one side, so I'm going to add 8x squared to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. All right, and that's going to give me 7 plus 8 is 15. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, minus 8 equals 0. All right, it's always a big first step when you're solving these quadratics is to get uh, zero on one side. Next, I want to factor my quadratic. All right, add to negative two, multiply to give me oops, 15 times eight, which is 120. All right, so my perfect pair is gonna be negative 12 and positive 10. Again, that perfect pair part's definitely the part that probably takes you a bit longer, and that's fine. Just take your time with finding the pairs. I do the splitting method of splitting that middle number. My first pair, 15x squared minus 12x, I can factor out a 3x. My second pair, I can factor out a 2. And I get my factored form, 5x minus 4 times 3x plus 2. All right, so that's going to go in my equation now. Now I can use the zero product property of separating this out into two smaller equations because they're equal to zero. And now I add four to both sides, divide by five. Now I subtract two from both sides, divide by three. All right, so again, we get these two answers. Most of the time for quadratics, not all the time, but a lot of times you get two answers to your quadratic expression. All right, so this example is just kind of a warning sign. The most popular wrong answer for this problem would be negative three and two for your final answer because you do the zero product property and you get your answer. The only problem is you can't do the zero product property because there's a six over here. All right, so how do we go about this one? Well, we have to do a bunch of simplifying in this case. We need to try to get uh, zero on one side. So the first thing we do is FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. Now I need to get the six over. All right, let's combine like terms first. Simplify our foil first. And now I want to get the six over by subtracting six from both sides. All right, so all those steps were just actually the first step of our strategy of getting zero on one side. I knew I had to do that because I didn't have zero to start. Now I factor x squared plus x minus 12. I add to one, multiply to negative 12. That's gonna be uh, positive four and negative three. All right, factoring out the greatest common factors and unfoiling gets me there. So x plus four times x minus three equals zero. Now I do the zero product property. Subtract four from both sides to get my first answer. Add three to both sides to get my second answer. All right, here's for one for you to try on your own. All right, if you notice, the first step's already been done for you. So really you just need to factor this quadratic and use the zero product property. All right, I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. And here's the final solution, you get negative four and one third. So again, this one is really just this, all this blue work on the, the right to factor our quadratic, then using the zero product property to split it up and solving from there. All right, now you're ready to go practice. All right, practice on uh, solving these equations by factoring. If you've already practiced a lot of your factoring and you practice your zero product property, it's nothing new. It's just combining those two lessons together in order to do this.